the, the real problem right now is that only a few million, or I don't you know, you, there's, there's different studies. There's one study that says 40 million people listen to podcasts. That was one research group. Another one said 4,000 people listen to podcasts. It's somewhere in between. We know this, right? <laughs> but it's not enough. Uh, you ask your mom, grandma, your brother, a lot of people don't. You know, they probably know what podcasting is. They have no idea how to listen to a podcast. They have no idea what huge variety and, and quality is out there. You know, a lot of people think they're podcasts. Yeah. And, and so it's really important to spread the word. And, you know, there's lots of different ways you can do it. You can do it locally. You can just, you know, find a great podcast that would fit somebody's interest and give it to them. Um, I do what I can. One of the reasons I still work in mainstream media, uh, besides the paycheck, is that it's an opportunity to spread podcasting. You know, my goal, my personal goal, is to expand my reach in media not because I want to uh, make more money or, or build my brand in mainstream media, but because I want to use mainstream media to promote my true love, which is podcasting. Ultimately, as anybody who's done commercial radio or television will tell you, as I told you last year, it's, it's a nightmare, it's a cesspool, it's a pit. You don't, you know, we have, what we have in podcasting is unique. It's freedom, it's creativity. A show can be as long or as short as it needs to be. You can have fun. You can try stuff nobody would ever let you do in mainstream media. Uh, it's really important that we cherish that, that we honor that. And, and I personally want to do that more than anything else. So, but I, I can't give up mainstream media. I still have to put up with program directors and operations managers and, and middle managers. It's already parent girl. Uh, you know. and, and I live with that because we need to get the word out, you know. I guess I'll have to even do reading with Kelly again. If I can convince them to do podcasting, I would. Uh, they do not want to hear about podcasts, but maybe this time they will. Like, every time I bring it up, I say, no, I don't want to be interested in podcasting. Uh, but someday they're going to say yes, right? And, and that will be a golden, a golden moment for me. So we, what, at whatever level you need to do this, please, that's our biggest job, our only job right now. Last year I came in front of you and I said, podcast your passion. Do it because you love it. Don't do it for the money. And now, of course, I'm taking advertising on Twitter. You're probably all there. <laughs> what a sellout. What a joy. And, and, you know, you all want to monetize it. And, and the truth is, you all can monetize it. I really, truly believe that. I think podcasting is, is going to end up being the most, I hate to say this, because in fact, I'm not going to, I was going to say the best advertising medium ever. That's true. That's the wrong point of view. Uh, anybody who says that to me, I'll slap them. Because it, it, even though that's true, it's not why we're here. We're here because it's a chance to create, to do what we love, to really make something of value. Having said that, there, there is more and more an opportunity to monetize podcasts. What we've got to look at is how to do this without hurting the culture, without hurting what we're doing, without selling out. You know, mainstream media turned into a machine for reaching its hand in people's pockets. And that's a lot of the reason we don't like mainstream media is because it's very clear that that's what they're doing, you know? Three minutes of content for four minutes of ads, you know? I, I do a radio show, when I cut the ads out, it goes from being three hours to an hour and 30 minutes. That's, that's a lot of ads in there, right? Uh, I don't like that, again, that's something I put up with because I think I need to reach out to people and spread the word. I've always done that. That's what I do is tell people about technology. Sometimes you have to buy the bullet and do it in a medium that maybe you don't like. We still have to promote this podcast. And the point is, we're going to start taking ads. We're going to start. Mon I should say taking ads. We're going to start monetizing in various ways. Uh, we need to be creative and thoughtful about it, and do it in a way that doesn't damage what we're doing, damage the culture. Um, I, I I've always thought of this for me as experimental. Everything we do on on Twit on the Twit Network is is totally experimental. The, the fun thing about being part of this is nobody has the answer. Nobody knows what's right. It isn't radio. That's I mean, and, and if you think it is. Stop that. Get out of the box. It isn't TV. It isn't like anything else. And to the degree that we're able to leave behind the old media and create new stuff is the degree to which we will succeed. That also goes for monetizing. Um, so, you know, I'm trying traditional ads. I'll try some traditional ads. Um, there are non-traditional ways of monetizing. I think they're also worth looking at. I'm going to try those. Things like, uh, you know, listener clubs. I think. You know, for me, I'm starting to realize that the most valuable part of Twit, and I think you as podcasters know this, or, and certainly should, is, is your audience, right? And it's the relationship you have with your audience. 
This is why it's strict. See, that's really what makes advertising cruel. But that's the thing you cannot damage, right? Uh, if, if you start to try to monetize that relationship, you're going to lose that relationship. You have to really focus on the fact that the number one thing that you have going for you is your conversation with your audience. My friend Robert Stoll in his book, Maybe Conversations, talks about this. Uh, in the Clue Train Manifesto, that's, that was the number one item on the manifesto is, is markets are conversations. And that's what's changed in this internet world. I come from the world of broadcasting where one guy talked, a lot of people listened and didn't say a word because you couldn't unless you were yelling at the TV and throwing something at it or like Elvis shooting it. But other than that, you had no recourse. Well, we deal with our audience directly every day. That is a huge asset. Sometimes a pain in the butt, I know. Uh, sometimes a hardship. Sometimes they say things you would never <laughs> to you that they, you would never say face to face to any person. But that's our asset. That's our strength, our relationship. We want to cultivate that. We want to work that. We want to build that. That's another way to build audience, is to build this relationship. So ultimately, that's another way to monetize your podcast, is to perhaps reward your audience with coupon codes that in, in return can come back some money to you. I've asked for donations from uh, the Twit audience from day one. They've been very generous. And I plan to keep doing that, even if I find ways to monetize in other ways. I think the donation is very important, because then they've been buying into you. Uh, it, they have an investment in you, and it keeps, believe it or not, uh, this is actually a well-known fact, and Chris uh, Matthews mentioned this in his book, Hardball of Politics. The best way to get somebody to be in your pocket is to get them to do a favor for you. John, Linda Johnson did this very well. It's kind of counterintuitive. Not do a favor for them, get them to do a favor for you. And then they have an investment in you, they care about you, they're suddenly on your side. It works really well to ask for a $2 donation. It's not much. I don't, I, it's, it's not about so much about the money. It's about the vote of confidence and the participation. So there are lots of ways. I think we need to be very creative about how we uh, do this. You know, I'm an old radio guy, so I kind of think of Twit as almost like a radio station. You know, I just hired a promotions director. It isn't really, and I have to remind myself it's not. It's a, we are in an exciting new medium that is changing very rapidly. Nobody knows what's right. So, it's, so monetization, it's important for us to go beyond the traditional means. I've been a little unhappy, I'll be honest with you, uh, with the way we sell right now. We sell by cost per thousand. That's the old school way of selling and advertising, where you get a, a, a dollar for every thousand listeners or five dollars. I mean, I think podcasters are, you know, radio is getting ten dollars per cost per thousand. Some magazines are a hundred dollars cost per thousand. I think podcasting somewhere in between maybe fifty to seventy dollars. I've heard some podcasters. Uh, Andrew Barrett is to be $175. I think mean, Andrew's probably right. But I think we do ourselves a disservice actually when we start talking about CDM. I think that, that unfortunately uh, is not going to be a model that's going to work very well for us. That's how agencies want to buy us. It's good for them. We have issues. And one of the issues, by the way, is, and this is another agenda item, is we have no way of measuring our audience. It's very effective. It feels like we do. It feels like I know how many people that it, but I think if you drill deep, those numbers are very, very fuzzy. Is it a full download? Is it a download request that didn't complete? Did they open four download requests and download a quarter each? If you really ask the provider, what does this number mean? It starts to get very fuzzy. Uh, the API agency I use, PodTrack, does some other stuff where they actually do a referral through them and they do IP checking. That number is way lower. I don't like that number. Very much. <laughs> You know, then they, they, so it slides up about 25% for non unis which I said, well, wait a minute. Now, couldn't it be possible that, you know, an ISP has one number and then 12 people are downloading it from that one number? What about that? Well, and then, and then they slice up another 25%. This is interesting because it's out of the U.S. Most of the, adver the traditional advertisers don't, have never been able to buy anything more than national advertising. So their model doesn't include global ad. Well, you know, Dell sells computers all over the world, but they only pay me for U.S. downloads. That's wrong, right? But that's their model. That's how agencies work. So I think that we are, numbers are, are not our friends at this point. One of the things we've got to stop doing, and I'm just as guilty of it as all of you, is, is hyping the numbers or you know, over inflating the numbers or even just talking too much about the numbers. Uh, it's a bad game to play because in the long run it's going to bite us. It also makes the other guy feel bad. I've come to the podcast and said, yeah, 10 million downloads last month. And I'm going, oh my. You know, uh, that's a lot. I only had three million. What are you? And, and, <laughs> and you're going, well, wait a minute. I only have a thousand. 
No, but seriously, we shouldn't be doing that because I don't think that any.